to the best of my knowledge, except perhaps for rendering some helicopter support, the Marines are not supporting the Vietnamese operations in Laos. How do you see that operation as it stands today? Uh, militarily, I think it is a logical operation. Uh, the Ho Chi Minh Trail in this area has always been the source of supply for the North Vietnamese forces in the northern part of South Vietnam, and especially since Sihanoukville has been denied to the North Vietnamese, it has taken on even greater importance. So militarily, it is a completely logical operation. As a 30-year military man, career officer, would you like to see the Marines go on into Laos and wipe this thing up? That, of course, is a political decision, and uh, we're ready to do any job which is assigned to us. Gentlemen, after careful deliberation, several hundred telephone calls, several hundred letters, and even some petitions, mm -hmm. I have discovered that I have a few friends left who had uh, rather fight than switch. So I'm here today to announce my candidacy for re-election to the mayor of the city of Fort Worth. The uh, tuition uh, increase proposal by Governor Smith is opposed by the Texas Junior College Teachers Association on the basis that tuition increases as proposed would place a burden on students who can least afford it. The average junior college student lives in his community, his resources are limited, and this increase then will make a more difficult situation for him in attending college. And so this increase in tuition is opposed by this association uh, in order to give our students, the junior college students, a break that he needs in order to complete what level of college education, level of training that he desires. Only the president has the power to uh, make things happen in the other executive departments. He has to be a super peer, so to speak, like the Bureau of the Budget. The Bureau of the Budget, when it comes to money, makes decisions uh, that affect the different departments. When it comes to policy decisions on changing services, on coordinating services, then the parallel office or one within the Bureau of the Budget uh, would have best access to the president to do this. And um, it almost has to be a, a, a special office to um, concentrate and focus its attention on what needs to be done and what kinds of reallocations of resources may be needed in the Department of Labor or Department of Housing or Agriculture to achieve a particular uh, goal uh, over a period of time.
the regional airport uh, will generate approximately $675 million worth of business into the economy of the metropolitan area. Approximately $300 million of dollars worth of new business annually that the love field cannot handle. It will generate approximately 35,000 jobs, which will more than absorb the amount of uh, jobs that might result be a result of the layoff in the aerospace industry in this area. Supposedly, we'll raise $300 million in the next biennium. State sales tax? State sales tax, yes, sir. That'll be raised from three and a quarter to four percent. You say in the biennium, do you foresee that uh, soon we'll have an annual budget for the state instead of I'm biennium? I'm hoping we will, Jim. It's difficult for me to run my little business in my home month to month. It's, it's awfully hard to look two years in the future and to set up the different things that are necessary to run a bigger thing as the state budget. Are we going to have a food tax? I surely hope not. That's one thing that I would, am against 100%. Well, uh, I've fought a lot of a lot of the best fighters in business, in fact most of them, and uh, uh, I have fought fighters on the way up that uh, fight like Daniels does, and it's got the same type of body style and everything. I've fought quite a few of them, in fact, so as far as the style, I'm sure it's not going to bother me in any, in any respect at all. And, of course, I've fought from Joe Frazier all the way down, Gary Quarry, and uh, you name them, I've fought them. So, uh, as far as the style, I, I don't think I'm going to have any trouble whatsoever. Do you think the fight will go the distance? Well, if it goes the distance, it goes the distance. Uh, the contract was signed for 10 rounds or less. And uh, if I see the opening, I'm going to take it, and I'm going to take advantage of it, and I'm going to get Terry out of there as soon as I can. Uh, I'm looking forward to a, a fight with number three ranked and an ex-champion, Jimmy Ellis. And uh, I hope uh, everything goes right and I don't get any bruises or anything in this fight. And if the opportunity arises for me to take Terry out of there, I'll definitely do that. This 1970 automobile has over 23,000 miles on it. In the state of California, it is illegal for a dealership to take this car as a used car and turn the mileage back. 
As a matter of fact, recently a major car company dealership lost its franchise and its license to sell automobiles in that state because of that very problem. As an individual, however, it's no problem. Here in the state of Texas, there are no laws concerning setting back mileage on used cars. As an individual, I can set the mileage back on this automobile for a cost of around $8. We talked to State Senator Oscar Mosey about the feasibility of such a law against individuals and car companies. Of course, there's a, a great need for protection of consumers. The speedometer law is one thing that can be done, but in all candor, the enactment of such a law would not really solve the problem. It's been suggested that perhaps the time to uh, check each speedometer is uh, at each state inspection and to have the speedometer sealed where it could not be removed from the automobile and then turned back. And this suggestion seems to me has a lot of merit. If we tie it to the annual state inspection, I think then we have official state action which will guarantee the truthfulness of the reading on that speedometer because it cannot be changed in between times without being noticed. Malcolm Landis, reporting for Channel 8, News on the Move. started this fund because this family obviously is uh, in need now and is going to be in need. Uh, the breadwinner of the family is laying in the hospital, uh, chained to a bed, I understand. The mother is in the hospital with a broken leg where it was shot in two places. And uh, there's eight children. They need to go to school. They need uh, food. They need care. They need love. And all of these things cost money. And I started this fund so that uh, the community can react and provide this family with the necessities of life until the father's in a position to come back out and provide for his family like he was doing before this happened. Well, I think his suggestion for the legislature to go to work is very appropriate and very much in order. That's what we've been trying to do in the Senate the first day of the session on January 12th. Our committees were appointed, bills were introduced, and the committees have been working, and the Senate's been working. I don't think it's time for people to shut up, though. I think it's time for people to open up. I think every official in Texas should open up his financial records so the public will know where his money comes from. I think it's time for everyone to file a copy of his income tax return, as I have done, to file a complete uh, copy of his uh, financial statement, as I have done, because the people of Texas uh, look upon their state government with great suspicion today. And rather than shutting up the government, I think it's time to open up the government.
members of Local 440 of the Firefighters Association and firefighters across the state received their first increase in longevity pay in 25 years last legislative session. This legislative session, firemen are in Austin lobbying for another increase in three to five dollars per month for each year of service. Several Fort Worth firemen were in Austin last week during the lobby. One of them was the president of the Fort Worth Firefighters Association, Captain John Murphy. I asked him today if he expects the bill to even get out of the Urban Affairs Subcommittee since most cities oppose its passage. Well, I'm sure there's mixed feelings. Really, I'm not, I don't really, I couldn't answer the question where it would be or not, but uh, some of them feel like it, it does have a chance of coming out. Some of them feel like maybe it won't. When Mayor R.M. Stovall announced for re-election yesterday, he was asked if he opposes the bill for a wage increase. I have no uh, comment to make on whether or whether or not uh, this is just one method or a vehicle to assure them of a pay increase. Uh, there are other methods of providing pay increases for firemen and policemen or civil service people or uniformed people or however you want to put it, uh, other than longevity pay. Stovall indicated he prefers that the firemen and police bring their pay increase request before the city council instead of the legislature, which they will probably do if the bill fails in Austin. Jim Green, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth.